My best friend Kelly once told me that good things and bad things happen in threes. I didn't believe it at first. Then three totally bad things happened to me and it changed my life forever. It all started on a day like any other day. I can't believe you got the skirt! Kelly screamed the moment she saw the new stuff in my room. You're so lucky. It's so gorgeous. Samantha is going to die with envy. I felt kind of embarrassed at Kelly's gushing. I mean, the skirt was pretty and kind of expensive, but it was just a skirt after all. Suddenly, my mom came into my room. Hope, honey, can you bring this over to Mr. Jenkins' apartment, please? Kelly turned her head away and rolled her eyes. I had to stop my giggles. Mr. Jenkins lived a few doors down from us and next door to Kelly's. His house smelled so bad. Now, please, mom added. She left a basket full of freshly baked bread on my dresser. Mom is always baking. I guess she had nothing better to do all day since dad made enough money to keep us comfortable. Kelly says that we're more than just comfortable, though. I wish I could go shopping any time like you, Kelly moaned while she stretched on my bed. I wish I could have a bag like this and a skirt like this. I felt bad for Kelly sometimes, so I offered to give her my new stuff. I mean, I can always buy them again. Kelly took them quick enough. She walked with me to Mr. Jenkins' door. Good luck with Mr. Stinky, she whispered as she went back to her own apartment. Mr. Jenkins opened the door quickly after hearing my knock. Although his face seemed pleased to see the bread basket, he was still gruff and grumpy. Your mom's making me eat too much, he complained. I told him not to worry. I'm sure mom used all organic stuff and healthy things in her baking. A lot of health-conscious people are always asking her to make things for them. Where's your friend? The next-door neighbor of mine? Mr. Jenkins asked. That girl who always wrinkles her nose at me. I don't like her. I had to cover my mouth so he wouldn't see me smile. I could tell him that Kelly didn't like him either, but I still had to be polite. When I got back home, Dad was there. He looked stressed. Come to the kitchen, Hope, he said. I have something important to tell you. I sat in front of the table still smiling. When my dad broke the most terrible news, he had lost his job. His company was closing and filing for bankruptcy. He wasn't even getting his last paycheck. Mom clutched her chest. My mouth gaped open. What are we going to do? My mom whispered with horror. Dad said that we'd have to live off of our savings for a while, but we had to cut down on a lot of things. That included a big chunk of my allowance. I'm very sorry, Hope, Dad said to me. I'm just glad that your school's paid up for the year. We'll worry about next year's tuition fee when we get there. But I wasn't worried about school at all. I just remembered that I had just given my newest clothes to Kelly, and now we couldn't afford to buy me anything. Samantha is going to be so smug, I thought. Samantha was our classmate, and she was always comparing my stuff to hers. When I told Kelly about what had happened to my dad, I was surprised at her reaction. They can't cut your allowance, she cried. That's so unfair. I tried to defend my dad. I mean, it wasn't his fault that his company was going under. They should be the ones to cut back, not you, Kelly said. They're the grown-ups. It's not your fault that your dad lost his job. Well, it's not my dad's fault either, I snapped back at her. Sometimes Kelly can be such a brat. We've been friends for a long time, but sometimes she acts so spoiled. Since I didn't have any extra money, I needed to find a job. Unfortunately, the only job for me was babysitting. Hey, I already take care of most of the kids in the building, Kelly said. Don't steal them from me, okay? I sighed. I wished that Kelly was willing to share some of her clients with me. I needed the money more than she did. One day, I was walking down the hallway to our door when Mr. Jenkins appeared. Do you need a job? He asked. I nodded, although I didn't know if he had any leads for me. I need somebody to clean up my apartment, he continued. Will you do it? I'll pay you. Mr. Jenkins' house smelled really bad, but I was desperate. My parents needed the money for food and household stuff. They didn't have extra to give me, so I agreed to Mr. Jenkins' plan. I was going to start the next day. My mom was thrilled. Even if we had so little money, she still made healthy sandwiches to share with Mr. Jenkins every day. If his house smelled bad from the outside, inside was 100 times worse. I had to cover my mouth to keep from gagging. It smelled like sour milk and old tuna. Sorry about the smell, he told me when he saw my face. But as you get older, you don't smell things as well anymore. That's why I need you to clean up. I've been getting complaints from the neighbors. I'm sure he was. If Kelly's mom was as outspoken as her daughter, she would have tried to get Mr. Jenkins evicted. I started with the kitchen, then the bedroom, then the bathrooms. At the end of the first day, I had almost 10 big trash bags full of junk. It was kind of disgusting, but there were interesting things too. You want this? Mr. Jenkins said while holding a small telescope. I'm too old to be bird watching anyway. The telescope was sticky with grime, but after I wiped it clean, it looked brand new. Wow, thanks, Mr. Jenkins, I said, and for the first time ever, he smiled at me and he handed me a transistor receiver with a remote control. He said that he used the gadget to listen to the different mating calls of birds. Mr. Jenkins even suggested that I go to the roof if I wanted a better look at them. I totally forgot all about that, however, when I got home. I found my parents in the kitchen again. My mom had tears running down her cheeks. 
What was worse was that my dad was teary-eyed, too. There are no jobs for me, he said with a dead voice. I'm willing to take on any job, but nobody is hiring. Mom went to kneel in front of Dad, and she cupped his face in her hands. Don't lose hope, she said so tenderly. We'll get through this. I never felt so scared in my life as I did that night. It wasn't about the money, though. It was remembering my parents looking so scared themselves. A few days later, I went to the roof, just as Mr. Jenkins suggested. It was so peaceful up there. I never really realized how big the sky was. It made me feel so small. And with that feeling, I realized that my problems were small as well. Anything was still possible. I just had to hope. I took out the telescope and the drone transistor radio. I tried to follow some birds around and I had one more realization. Bird watching was terribly boring. So instead of looking up, I used the telescope to spy on the people on the street. To my surprise, I saw Kelly stepping out of our building. I made the transistor receiver follow her from above. Hey, Samantha! She shouted to the nicely dressed girl waiting for her at the corner. Samantha looked very happy to see her. They seemed like best friends. They even linked their arms together and started giggling at once. Nice bag, Samantha said admiringly. Thanks, Kelly replied. I looked closer at the bag on her shoulder and saw that it was the brand new designer bag that I gave her. Where's Hope? Samantha asked. Kelly started to laugh. I don't know. I don't care, Kelly replied. She sunk so low. She's sad and pathetic now. She's practically a cleaning lady. I call her Miss Stinky because she's cleaning the house of our neighbor, old Mr. Stinky. Tears filled my eyes and I let go of the receiver remote control. I couldn't listen anymore. I felt so betrayed. I never thought that Kelly could ever talk about me like that. It wasn't just my dad who lost something, I whispered. It looks like I lost my best friend, too. I didn't think it was possible, but my day got even worse. After I lost sight of Kelly and Samantha, I saw someone else stepping out of our building. It was my mom. She was waving to someone in a car, and it stopped to pick her up. It was a flashy car, and my mom was smiling from ear to ear. She was also dressed up to the nines. The driver stepped out of the car and walked over to open her door. I didn't recognize him, though. He was very handsome. My mom was looking at him like he was a gift from the heavens. I started to feel cold all over. There was something going on here, but I wasn't sure what it was. So for the next three days, I went to the roof. Every day, mom came out of our building. Every day, she got into the stranger's car. She seemed happier than I had ever seen her. Then I remembered what Kelly told me about the three bad things happening together. First, my dad lost his job. Second, we lost our money. And now for the third, it seems like my mom was having an affair. How could she do this? How could she betray us? When she finally got home on the third day, she was still smiling. A part of me was hoping that she was doing something else anything else other than cheating on my father, but she never said anything. I could see that she was trying to act all normal, but I caught her smiling behind my father's back. When dad asked her what she did that day, she just answered that she spent the day baking. I wanted to scream that I knew her secret. The only baking she did that day was a cheater's pie. I wanted to confront her, but I just couldn't. Not yet anyway. It was hard to even get up in the morning. The next day was my last day cleaning for Mr. Jenkins. It was unrecognizable now. It smelled so much better, too, after all the essential oils and diffusers I used. Before I left, Mr. Jenkins handed me an envelope with cash as payment for my cleaning services. When I peeked inside, I gasped. It was more money than I expected. It was more money than my allowance. Um, Mr. Jenkins? I asked him. Are you sure you put the right amount in here? Why? He growled. Do you want some more? No, I quickly replied. I told him that it was more than what he owed me. I tried to give some of it back, but he wouldn't take it. Just go and spend it on whatever you kids like to buy nowadays, he added. Then he practically shoved me out the door. Wow, I didn't think that Mr. Jenkins was rich enough to give this much money to anyone. Was my luck finally turning? The three bad things were done and over with. The envelope full of cash in my pocket was definitely a good thing. Should I expect two more good things to follow now? I was scared to hope after everything that had happened. But when I got home, my mom was impatiently waiting for me. Hurry up, Hope, she said. I have an announcement to make. My heart sank to my stomach. My mom looked fantastic and made up. She definitely looked like she was in love and having an affair. I braced myself to hear her announcement that she was leaving us. How was I going to take care of my dad all by myself? Mom practically pushed me down into a chair beside my dad. Then she dramatically made her announcement. I got a job! She cried. What? I cried. What? 
Dad repeated. My mom started talking really fast. She was so excited. She said that she got a call from a friend who owned a restaurant. They suddenly got an investor who wanted to expand their store and add a bake shop. That investor insisted that they get my mom to head the kitchen. Since they already loved her breads, it was a done deal. I get to do what I love to do and get paid for it. My mom cried out with happiness. How much money are we talking about here? My dad said breathlessly. Well, mom said with a shy smile, it's not as big as your salary used to be, but it's close. My dad was so relieved and so happy that he picked up my mom right there in the middle of the kitchen and spun her around. Then they started dancing. They were acting like crazy people, but I have to admit I was so happy I wanted to dance along with them. The next day, my mom baked a special batch of bread and told me to bring some to Mr. Jenkins again. I was happy to do it for her. I haven't said thank you to you, she said softly. What for? I asked. Well, you never complained when we cut your allowance, mom said. You never complained about having to work and clean up Mr. Jenkins's apartment. Thank you for being such a good sport about all of this. She gave me a big hug. I don't think a lot of kids would have reacted the way you did, she added. I couldn't help but remember Kelly. She thought that my parents were just being unfair to me. She was wrong. We were all doing the best we could. When I walked to Mr. Jenkins's place, I took a big sniff from the bread basket. It smelled like victory and hope. I was surprised when Mr. Jenkins asked me to join him for tea. Your mom's bread will make the tea bearable, he said with a gruff laugh. I sat in front of him and took a bite from a bread roll. I'm sure that your mom's bakery will be a success, he said suddenly. I nodded. Then I gasped. How did he know about it? Mr. Jenkins laughed at the look on my face. Then I saw a twinkle in his eyes. Didn't they say who the new investor was? He asked me. It turned out that Mr. Jenkins himself was investing in the bakery. He was the brains behind it all. He was so touched that my mom was thoughtful enough to give him free food, whether we had money or not. He knew that he had to help people who were kind like that. I also did it for you, you know. He added, you're a pretty good kid. I thought you were going to turn down my job offer to clean my house, but you faced it like a responsible adult. Mr. Jenkins kept on talking, and I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I didn't know that he was a millionaire, and that he even owned the whole building that we lived in. I thought he was just a grumpy old man. But it turns out that he used to be a very successful businessman before he retired. I'm thinking of hiring a person to manage all my apartment blocks, he told me. Is your dad still available? I think he's a good choice. I could only nod as Mr. Jenkins made plans to talk to my dad that day. That's three things, I said under my breath. What did you say? Asked the old man. Three things, I said again. Three good things are happening right now after the three bad things that happened before. First, my dad lost his job. Second, we lost our money. Third, then I stopped talking. There wasn't a third thing. My mom wasn't having an affair. What's the third thing? Mr. Jenkins asked. There's none, I replied. I can think of one, he said. Then he told me about Kelly. The real reason why he never liked Kelly was because he overheard her talking about me. Apparently, Kelly only wanted to be my friend because she liked all the free stuff she got from me. Your friendship with that girl was the first bad thing that happened to you, he said. She was a bad friend. I don't hear her talking about you anymore. Now she just goes on and on about this new girl, Samantha. I thought hearing about Kelly and Samantha would hurt me, but oddly enough, it didn't. I guess going through everything these past few months made me realize that there were more important things in life. My mom was right, I said softly. I thought of all the new directions we were taking. Our lives were about to change, and I was excited to meet them head on, even if there are a lot of bad things that may come our way. I'm looking forward to finding a better friend someday. There is always hope for me. There is always hope for all of us.